What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Power Play with CJ. We're focusing on the uh, Western Conference playoffs real quick. Just a couple uh, notes. Um, one of them, Nashville being up 3-1 to on the St. Louis Blues. Doesn't surprise me. I picked Nashville in that series. Um, you know, they really, their offense from their defense has been phenomenal, and that's, you know, been the backbone of the team Dave Poyle's constructed over the last, um, you know, how long he's been in Nashville. I mean, shit, it's almost 20 years. Um, but, you know, you look at the Kimo Timmons of the world, you look at the uh, Shea Weber, Ryan Suters of the world, Roman Yossi, um, obviously now, and, you know, P.K. Subban, even going a step further, Ryan Ellis, and, um, you know, uh, th that entire line. I mean, even the, the Weber, Matt Irwin defense course, defense pair has looked <clears throat> not bad. So, you know, that's just how they do things in Nashville, and that makes life so much easier for their forwards. And I think they will close things out tonight in uh, in St. Louis, um, you know, because I, I really think this, that the Predators will be playing in their first conference finals ever in franchise history um, by this time <coughs> next week. Um, other series, the Edmonton uh, Anaheim series. They say it's not a series until the home team loses. Well, it's not a series until the home team wins in this one. Um, obviously, being 2 2 with Edmonton winning 2 in Orange County and the Ducks winning 2 in Alberta. Um, I picked Anaheim at the start of the series, and then, you know, Edmonton kind of was like, holy shit. I still think Anaheim's going to pull this one out. Um, you know, you just look at their depth up front. You know, as injured as they've been on D all series long, I mean, when Ryan gets off, he's, he's cooking like he's cooking. And Corey Perry hasn't really been Corey Perry yet, but that could change any given night. And you look at the Silverbergs and the Raquels and, you know, what Ryan Kessler's done in terms of playing a 200-foot game. Uh, you just say to yourself, holy shit, is this team deep. And, uh, you know, being able to roll four lines has been, you know, three anyway. Three very, very, very good lines. Um, you know, it's made Randy Carlisle's job very easy, and uh, I think could definitely be what gets uh, Anaheim over the top in uh, in that series against the Oilers. You know, I just I want to point out that Nashville and Anaheim playing in the conference finals. I mean, if there's a better calling card for some belt hockey, I don't know what it is, um, but it's it's where we're at, and I think it's good. You know, you look at the growth of hockey in Tennessee, in Southern California over the last. 15, 20 years, whatever it's been, um, you know, kids are coming from those places and, and having great success. And, you know, the team success is a big reason why. Um, and that's pretty freaking cool for someone like me that, that loves watching, you know, the the seeds of Sunbelt expansion bloom. There's some really, really good plucky players. Um, you know, again, is there a better going totally aside right now, is there a better example of, some, of why Sunbelt expansion has been successful than Austin Matthews, no. Anyway, that's all I got. This episode of the Power Play with CJ. Stay tuned for more episodes of the season and beyond. Later, guys.